and welcome to my Mer Cave! It is Phantom for the Magicraptor.com and we are in a new space. I don't know if you can tell or not, but this is a basement. Um, so please try to ignore the nasty yellow brick that is behind me. Eventually I would like to update it. I'm slowly trying to decorate this. It can be like a mermaid sort of challenge thing. Maybe I can come up with some home decor stuff to make this look less like a uh, a basement and more like a proper mermaid house but that's not what we're here for today today I am here to follow up on last week's video which was an uncut version of my first swim in my silicone mermaid tail which is right behind me and um, we're just gonna talk about a few of the mermaiding mistakes that I made I'm gonna let you know what I did wrong and how you can avoid that for when you go on your first mermaiding adventure, um, specifically in a silicone mermaid tail. But some of these things could apply to if you're wearing a fabric tail, kind of, sort of, ish. But let's jump into it. So if you watched my video, which I will link in a little card right over here somewhere, my first swim wasn't exactly elegant. Uh, just like I probably don't look very elegant right now, I actually can't see, I have no contacts in and no glasses and I'm legally blind about them so I'm just like, ah, I don't know where I'm looking. But my first swim was not elegant. I was blind then too. I can't see when I swim because I hate my contacts to fall out and I can't wear my glasses in the water and I refuse to wear goggles because I don't like the way they fit and they never stay on my face anyways. So I was not elegant. I looked like a terribly clumsy fish. And one of the things you will notice if you watch that video is that it is very short-lived, my first adventure out into the water. And that was because my feet actually were slipping out of my monofin and my tail. Which the monofin, if you don't know, is built into this part here. This is the monofin that I have for my fin fun mermaid tail. With the little foot pockets. The one inside of my silicone tail is a lot different than that. But uh, kind of similar. Straps and everything on it. If you have a tail, you know what I'm talking about. Um, if not, you can look up, I'll link a Finis monofin, Finis, Finesse monofin in the description. You can like click there and see what it looks like. Would insert a picture, but I don't want to do that. So in the description, you'll find that. But the silicone mermaid tails have these big monofins in them. And I did not know how to put the monofin on right. Let me explain. First mistake I made before going on my first swim was that I did not have neoprene little foot socks. These little things here, they are a lifesaver. You need to get yourself a pair. They go on your feet. I'll stick one on right now. I'm not wearing any socks, so why not? I don't know if you can see that piece of my foot. Okay, that's my foot. <laughs> they go over your feet, and what they do is they kind of help keep your foot from sliding out of the straps in your monofin. I didn't wear any on my first swim and that just like it made a world of difference because you have like this lubricant on your skin and then the lubricant is rubbing against the slippery silicone of the strap on your monofin and like everything just slipping and sliding around inside of your tail and then if your heel falls out of your tail before you get in the water it's just a mess and everything's falling apart you just feel like a big sloppy floppy fish mess and it's not fun. So. First thing you can do to avoid having a disastrous first swim in your silicone mermaid tail is to buy yourself some neoprene foot socks. Um, anything I mentioned in this video I will link in the description below so you can find like similar products. Um, I actually went to a ton of stores, believe it or not, even the sporting goods stores I had near me didn't have those. So I had to like shop around until I found them at some like random local place which was the weirdest place ever. But I got them and I'm so happy. Another thing that I had an issue with was that my heel straps, I did not know how to adjust them properly. There's a little technique on how to adjust your monofin heel straps. Mernation was awesome enough, the girls from Mernation, to create me a video showing me how to adjust my heel straps. But that was, I asked them that after my first swim because I was so devastated. I emailed them, was like, listen, my feet are falling out, what can I do? They sent me a tutorial showing me how to adjust these. It's tricky because you have to reach your hand up in your monofin, like inside of your tail, and like kind of blindly wiggle around and pull this strap out, and then you have to adjust the strap, and then you put it back in. It's kind of like a trial and error sort of thing. 
But the second thing you can do to avoid a big mermaiding mishap is to uh, adjust the heel straps on your model fin so they fit your feet right. Now don't freak out if you adjust your heel straps, you wear neoprene socks, neoprene socks, and your feet still fall out of your tail. It's not a big deal. Your feet don't have to be like strapped into your model fin to swim in one of these things. Actually on my second swim, which I was out there for like an hour, maybe a little longer, uh, which I'll also link right up here if you want to see it, I swim a lot better and my heel straps had fallen off at that point, but um, your feet can stay in if you do the next thing I will tell you about that I completely forgot to do on my first swim and actually it didn't even cross my mind because I just want to jump right in the water is when you wear a silicone mermaid tail you have to let the air bubbles out now if you watch my first swim video the uncut version you will see that there's a second where I have like little a <laughs> little mermaid farts <laughs> I don't know how else to say it um that is my the air coming out of my silicone mermaid tail if you don't let the air out then there's like air bubbles in your tail and you kind of just like the air bubbles want to come out while you're swimming and it kind of like tries to push your body out too because like the bubbles are trying to get out of your tail it's kind of helping to slide you out of your tail too so you get in your tail you kind of have to let the air bubbles out and it'll suction your tail closer to your body and keep you in it better so that helps a lot it's probably the best tip i can give you is make sure you let the air bubbles out of your tail before you take off as cool it looks to jump straight in the water and start swimming. A lot of you commented that on my one video, the first version, the cut version of my first swim, and that was really sweet of you. But you don't want to do that. You want to let the air bubbles out. Otherwise, your tail could come off, and you don't want that. And the last little tip I'm going to give you when it comes to mermaiding is if you watch my first swim video, the uncut version and the cut version, you will see my wonderful parents carrying me down to the water. Now, if you have a merangler, that is great if they want to carry you, um, if they're strong enough to do so without hurting themselves, more power to them and um, awesome for you. But it really helps if you have a trolley. If you watch Mermaid Reina's videos on how to become a mermaid, she has a whole series on it. It's awesome. You need to check it out if you haven't already. She has like this little trolley thing she pushes, or she gets pushed around on. I have one. I would show it to you, but I'm blind right now and it's somewhere over there and I'm just gonna knock over my whole set if I try bringing it to you. Mine is too small for my body, but it worked. I went to a mermaiding event, um, a book fair, and I was a mermaid at a pirate themed book fair. It was so much fun. Uh, and I was pushed around on my little trolley by my mom, but the trolley was so small I had to like crunch my knees up to my chest and like grab my monofin. I was like all squished up in a ball. Uh, I'm actually thinking of buying a bigger one. And this little trolley, dolly, utility cart, whatever you want to call it, it folds up. The one I'm looking at and the one I have, they both fold up. And it's just really handy to have when you're going to events that way. You can get pushed around like where you need to go if you need to get out of the car dressed up as a mermaid and then pushed into wherever you're going to go swimming or make an appearance or whatever without ruining the magic and having to get dressed like on the scene. The, char the, the little carts help save your mer wranglers backs. It makes it easier for you to get from one place to the other. It makes it safer for you to get to one place to the other and it's just you need to get one. Uh, you can get them at Home Depot or Lowell's or like any other hardware store or I will link, there's one I've been looking at on Amazon, I'll put, the dis I'll put the link in the description. I can't talk today, but it'll be in there if you guys want to check that one out. I'm going to be purchasing it as soon as I get a little bit more cash together, but I need to get more cash together first and then I'll get it. If you guys get it before I do, please let me know how it works. It, it looks like a great one and um, I'm pretty excited to add that to my collection of stuff and then use my other one for hauling around boxes because it's small and awesome and it works but it's too small for my mermaid butt to sit on. So yeah. Uh, those are four of the tips that I have for you today. If you want to find out some more little mermaiding tips I have to help you make your first swim as magical as possible and not have it be a flop 
then please check out my blog. I will have a little, um, like, what do you want to call it? Like a supplemental blog post. It'll have some additional facts and tips for your first mermaiding adventure and your silicone tail. So if you want to go to www.themagicrafter.com, you can search the blog and find that post. Or you can check the description box because it'll be there too. Basically, moral of this story, this whole video, check the description box because there's awesome stuff down there. But yeah, um, I'm still kind of recovering a bit from a cold, so I'm like all stuffy and everything, so I'm sorry. I'm choking on myself. And yeah. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you found it helpful, I would appreciate a big thumbs up. And if you want to share it with any other mermaids or mermen or just anybody you feel like sharing it with, it would be really helpful for me and hopefully for them to um, just, yeah. You don't want your first swim in your silicone tail to be a disappointment. You want to make sure that it is as awesome as possible. I'm here to help you out and hopefully help out anyone else you may know who may be thinking of going for their first swim in the near future. Whether that's in a chlorine pool, an ocean, a beautiful sea, or a freezing cold freshwater lake that, hey, has no sharks. Anyways, I'm going to say thanks again for watching and um, look forward to another video coming soon. Um, I want to say before I go though, sorry I've been a little inconsistent with the posts. I've just been going through some medical issues and just having some personal problems and uh, I'll touch base on that here in a future video pretty soon. It's kind of just really rough. So yeah, but thanks again for watching and you have a magical day and a magical first swim, I hope. <laughs> Bye!